Hi, my name's Adam and I'm a trainee solicitor at Procter & Hobbs Solicitors. Now I'm going to be showing you what day in the life of a trainee solicitor actually is like. So stay tuned and I'll be showing you my journey to work. <laughs> So I've just come into work, just saying hi to the receptionist and I'm just going to go ahead to my desk and I'll show you my checklist for today on things I'm going to get ahead with. So I'll just go into my desk, I'll show you a little video and I'm going to get working on my checklist for today. So this is my desk, I've got a calendar that plans out my day and I've just been working, I've got my phone there so if I need to take any calls it'll be easy and I've got my checklist for today. So I focus in three different areas of law. The first one is prison law. So that's when we get letters, emails or calls from prisoners or their relatives. They usually call us regarding any sort of legal query they need, any lifeline as to some sort of legal advice to fight for their rights. Because if you think about it, prisoners, they're in a prison. They don't really have anybody on the outside besides their family or relatives or their friends fighting for them. They need that lifeline and for us we're more than happy to sort of help them, to be there for them and to offer that lifeline. Now we're going to be moving on to the second area I focus on. So the second area I focus on is commercial litigation. This week I've got defence due. So our client which is the defendant in a matter, he's got to put forward his defence. So today I'm going to be drafting that and the key to a defence is being able to prove whether or not your client is legally liable for the proceedings being put against him and what's his legal standing. So I'll be running through this and drafting this for today. So as you can see, I've got the particulars of claim and I've also got the defence. So I've made a start on the defence and I've just put forward the particulars of claim to the claimant and he's just provided his perspective in red. So, in all of the points we've got to address in the particulars of claim, we need to admit, neither deny or admit, or deny completely each of the points. If we don't address a point that was in the particulars, we would be seen as admitting those. So, in each of the points, we will be addressing those. And that's what I've got in the defence so far. And I'll be finishing that today and submitting it and filing it to the court. So, I'm just going to go for my walk. I've got 20 minutes and that's my break. So, I'm going to enjoy the sun, the lovely weather, go somewhere, get energised, have some sort of mental health break where I can just get ready for the rest of the day ahead and freshen up. So another important part of being a training solicitor is being able to get lunch for everybody. So today we're going to be eating from Bombay Bites. So here we've got a lease. A tenant's come in today and he's just asked us to break it down. So there are key parts in the lease that we need to make the tenant understand. This is use, rent review, it's also repairs and it's utilities. This is directly the things that affect our tenant and he's got to be understanding of all of this when he's agreeing to his lease. So we're going to break this all down to our client and I'll get back to you guys after I've had my meeting with him. So now we're going to be running through the lease. These are the different clauses within the lease. The ones that are most important to our tenant is the ones that are highlighted in red. So this is annual rent. This is usually broken down in the clause to be paid every month. Sometimes it's weekly or sometimes it's even annually. Then there's the review of the annual rent. That's essentially the rent review. So what happens is that the landlord sort of puts the rent into the marketplace and challenges it and sees if it fits into the marketplace. This could either increase or decrease according to what the market rate is. Then it's utilities. So this is the usual bills and any sort of expenditures that need to be, needs to be paid by either the landlord or the tenant. Then we have assignments. So this is if there's a long-term lease, such as a lease that's over five years. And for example, if there's, a, if there's two years of the lease that have already surpassed and they're wanting to assign the rest of the years of the lease to another party, they assign that lease. Then 
there's alterations so that's if they're changing anything within the building itself and who has the right to sort of allow that to happen and if there's any consent that needs to be taken then there's the use so ensuring that the use is compliance with what the what the what the council and now enable the party to have in the property then there's re-entry and forfeiture so this is essentially the circumstances of which a lease can be either terminated or give the landlord the right to re-enter. So I'm going to be heading off home. I hope you really enjoyed seeing what a training solicitor actually gets up to. So hopefully stay tuned to our YouTube channel. Hope you subscribe, like and share this video. Thanks. Thanks.